Okay, so <clears throat> what about as we uh, continue along and we talk about now acceleration? So <clears throat> position is S of t, whereas velocity is the derivative of S of t. Acceleration happens to be the second derivative of position or the derivative of velocity, um, which is your acceleration function. We won't talk about jerk. That'll be the, the third derivative. Let's just do an example to kind of set our mind here. It says the equation of motion is given uh, for a particle S measured in meters and T as in seconds. Find A, the velocity function, B, the acceleration function, or the acceleration at time one, and the acceleration with the velocity when the velocity is zero. So for A, the velocity function is the derivative. So 3t squared minus 12t plus 12. B says the acceleration at time 1. First I need to find the acceleration function. The acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function. So if I want to find the acceleration at time 1, I plug 1 in and I get 6 minus 12 is negative 6. And here is our label, meters per second, that would be velocity, meters per second squared is our acceleration label. And then C, what is the acceleration when, this should not say with, but when the velocity is zero. So when we take the velocity function, we set it equal to zero. Zero equals 3t squared minus 12t plus 12. If I factor out the three, I get t squared minus 4t plus, plus 4. So 3 times t minus 2 and t minus 2. So it turns out that the velocity is equal to 0 at time 2. So what is the acceleration when the velocity is 0? Well, the acceleration at time 2, we plug in 2, and we get 6 times 2 minus 12 is 0 meters per second squared. So if there's a little introduction of velocity, or uh, acceleration is the second derivative, but now let's apply it to these problems, okay? It says the equation of motion is given for a particle where s is in meters and t is in seconds. So we see this guy right here. And the first question is, what is the velocity at time t? Velocity is the derivative of position, so it's going to be 18t minus 3t squared. What is the acceleration at time t? The acceleration at time t is equal to 18 minus 6t. So I take the derivative of velocity. When is the velocity positive? So we're wondering, where is 18t? minus 3t squared greater than 0. So I'm going to solve this graphically, but if you would like to solve this by doing your calculator, you can look at that as well. If I factor out a 3t, I get 6 minus t. When I graph that, I can plot 0, and I plot 6. And it's a parabola that goes upside down. So the question is, when is the velocity positive? This is your velocity function, and it's positive whenever it's above the x-axis. So from time equals 0 to 6. When is the acceleration positive? Well, now I'm going to look at the acceleration graph. And the acceleration graph is 18 minus 6t. So that means it has a y-intercept of 18 and a slope of negative 6. If I solve, you can see it's going to be equal to 0 at time 3. So the question is, when is the acceleration positive? The acceleration is positive from 0 to 3. Now we get to something that looks complicated. We are going to make it very, very simple. It says, when is the particle speeding up? This is where we need to focus on a very important demonstration. And I just need you guys to know that I know that these problems seem difficult, 
We'll practice them. We'll make sure you're good at them. But they are going to come up throughout the year. This is one of the main stays of the AP exam that we must get ready for is this type of problem. I'm going to look at a situation where the velocity is positive and the acceleration is positive. So I'm going to draw that. Velocity positive means I head to the right, and acceleration positive means that you know, I'm kind of gaining that speed so in the positive direction. So That would be a situation where both velocity was positive and the acceleration was positive. Here's a situation where the velocity is positive and the acceleration was negative. So you would say in that situation, you could see that my velocity was positive up until I turned around. But I will do it again. Velocity is positive, but acceleration is negative. Okay? So you would say in this case, I was speeding up. In this situation, I was slowing down. Let's look at a different situation. Let's look at velocity negative and acceleration negative. Velocity negative means I'm moving in the left direction. This is what that looks like. So in this situation, you would say you were speeding up. You were just speeding up in the opposite direction. Now let's look at velocity negative, acceleration positive. This is what that looks like. So before I started turning around, you would have said that I was slowing down. Again, I'll do it again. Velocity is negative, so I'm heading in the uh, direction of the left, but acceleration is positive, okay? You'd say you're slowing down. So an object is speeding up if the signs are the same for acceleration and velocity. An object is slowing down if they are opposite signs. So I want you to consider the question. When is the particle speeding up? Well, it looks like, <coughs> if we were to check this out, we would put them on the same graph, okay? So if I draw this one up here, okay? It looks like um, during this space right here, they are both positive. So from 0 to 3, okay? And then it looks like for a while they are both, or one is positive and one is negative. So consider this spot, okay? So <clears throat> here we have the, uh, you can see that acceleration is negative, but you can see that the velocity is positive. And that happens from three to six. So from three to six, it's slowing down. And then it looks like we get to a point where they're both negative again. Look, this graph is below the x-axis, and this graph is below the x-axis. So from 6 to infinity, it looks like it's speeding up again. Okay. Now, if you struggle with that, I'll, I'll just, um, you can kind of also um, outline it like this. You could draw a little graph, and you could plot those values. Uh, you could plot a 0, 3, and 6. And you could plot, say, velocity and acceleration. You can see that the velocity function is the blue one. It's positive from 0 to 3. It's positive from 3 to 6. And then it's negative after that. Whereas acceleration was positive from 0 to 3, and then it was negative from 3 to 6, and it's negative from 6 to infinity. So notice what we have. We have same sign speeding up. We have same sign speeding up. We have opposite sign slowing down. Now let's pick up what we did with the last section. What is the distance the particles travel over the course of 8 seconds? Well, I need to consider its start. I need to consider its change in position. And I also need to consider its, um, its end. So it ends at 8 seconds. So its position at the start, I plug in 0. And if you plug in 0 to this guy, you get 0. 
It looks like it changes direction at time six. So I'm going to plug in six to my function. And <clears throat> so if we plug in six, we get, um, what is my function? Is it nine? I've got nine times six squared, then minus six raised to the third power. And you can see you get 108. So it's over at 108 is where it changes direction. And then it ends at time eight. So here's a little trick for you. Press second, enter, it brings up the same thing. You can just put eight in there instead of six. Obviously, you could go into a table and do it as well. And we get 64. So it looks like it starts at zero, it goes to 108, and comes back to 64. So the, the graph looks like that. That's, that's the motion of the particle. So it travels 108 meters, and then it also travels from 108, oh, sorry, 108 plus 108 minus uh, 64. So we got to figure out that distance from 108 to 64. So I'll subtract that. 108 minus 64. And we add that to 108 and you get 152 meters. We're going to look at this second example. Good job in explaining that, okay? Or uh, focusing through that. I know that that's tough. We're going to do an example now where you have to use your calculator. And it says that this, you'll see how complicated that is. I know you're looking at it and saying, wow, that's really bad, Mr. Gens. That's more likely what you're going to get on the AP exam. And they'll say, use your calculator. <clears throat> and so it says, what is the velocity at time t? So in order to determine velocity, we must take the derivative. So I'm going to set up the chain rule. So I have 3 sine of u. I have pi x minus 2. The derivative of 3 sine of u is 3 cosine of u. The derivative of pi x minus 2 is pi. So I get v of t is 3 pi cosine of pi x minus 2. And the derivative of 1 is 0. What is the acceleration? I take the second derivative. 3 pi, sorry, 3 pi cosine of u, pi x minus 2. The derivative of 3 pi cosine of u is negative 3 pi sine of u. And the derivative of pi x minus 2 is pi. So I get acceleration at time t is equal to negative 3 pi squared times sine of pi x minus 2. When is the velocity positive? Let's look at the velocity function. I'm going to grab my calculator here. I'm actually going to plug in all three functions. The original one is 3 sine of pi x minus 2 plus 1. And the second one is 3 pi cosine of pi x minus 2, and then the final one, negative 3 pi squared times sine of pi x minus 2. And right now, I just want to look at the velocity function. So I'm just going to highlight number 2, and I'm going to look at the velocity function. Mode, make sure that you're working in radians. And zoom 6, I'll zoom 6, and you can see your graph here. Okay? So, when is the velocity positive? Well, whenever I am above the x-axis. And notice your time interval is from 0 to 1. Okay? 
So I'm going to go back to my window, and I'm just going to look when x is going to go from negative 1 to 2. That way we'll make sure we see everything. As I look at this graph now, very good. So if I draw this out, this is the velocity function. You can see that if this is 1, that the graph looks something, you know, we'll go like, we'll go like that, okay? So it looks like it's above the x-axis wherever I draw the blue, okay? Wherever I draw the blue, and we'll stop at 1, and it's below the x-axis here. So the velocity is positive on the blue. In order to figure out that spot, I'm going to second calculate, and I'm going to choose the 0, number 2. I go to that spot. I move to the left, press Enter. I move to the right, press enter, enter on guess, and I get 0.136. So it looks like <clears throat> the velocity is positive from 0.136 all the way over to 1. When is the acceleration positive? Well, now I need to look at my acceleration function. So I'm going to get rid of the velocity function. Press enter on that equal sign. I'm going to go down to the velocity function, press enter, and I graph. So I can't see everything. I'll take my window. I need to go a little bit higher. We'll go um, you know, negative uh, 40 to positive 40 and put tick marks. Oh, not 10, 40, and we're going to go tick marks every uh, 10. I press graph here. Okay, so that gives us a slightly different graph for acceleration. And you can see if, if 1 is here, it looks like the graph kind of does one of those things. Okay? So it looks like it's uh, above the x-axis where it's wherever it's blue. And it's below the x-axis wherever it's red. We want to find that spot where it changes. So I'm going to calculate my zero, number two. Left bound, enter. Right bound, move to the right of it, press enter. Enter on guess. I have 0.637. So it looks like the velocity is positive, or the acceleration is positive from 0 to 0.637. So if you were to kind of mark those points, you know, if you were to mark uh, 0, 0.136, 0 0.637, and 1, okay, and you were to put velocity on the top and acceleration on the bottom, notice from 0 to 0 0.136, the velocity is negative, and then it's positive after that. If you look at acceleration, acceleration is positive up until you get to 0 0.637, and then it's negative after that. So when is the particle speeding up? From 0 0.136 to 0 0.637. When is the particle slowing down from 0 to 0 0.136, because they're opposite signs, union with 0 0.637 to 1? Finally, when is or what is the distance the particle has traveled over the course of one second? So I want to consider the start. I want to consider where it changes direction. And I want to consider the end. So the particle starts at time zero, and now if you look at your functions, you're not going to be using the third one, you're going to be using the first one. That's my position. Go ahead to your table and type in zero, and you get negative 1.728. It changes direction when the velocity is zero. The velocity is zero at 0 0.136. I get negative two.
When does it end? We said it ends at one second. 3.73. So if I plot these points out, Notice what the object is doing. It starts at negative 1.73. It goes to negative 2 and changes direction and ends up at 3.73. So my first distance is from negative 1.73. I'm going to subtract from that negative 2 to find that distance. Negative 1.73 minus negative 2. So it looks like it traveled 0.27 in that first bit. So 0.27 right there. And it traveled 2 to get back to 0. And traveled 3.73 after that. So 0.27 plus 2 plus 3.73. So I add those up. I get six. Six meters is the total distance traveled. Okay, I know that that's not easy. This is a difficult lesson. Please do your best. You might have to rewatch it, take a break. If you need to stop in after school sometime to go over something, let's do it together and see where you're at. Okay, good luck. Hope to see you soon. Soon.